In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create and use Cloud Code Surveillance in your projects. The first thing that you have to do is going into your computer's terminal or any IDE terminal, like for example, in VS Code or Cursor, like I have in here. And then you just have to make sure that you have Cloud Code installed. In order to do so, you just have to make sure that you have Node.js installed in your computer. You can check it out by saying Node-V, okay, and this will tell you the version, which is fine. And then you just want to have to type in the following code command in order to install cloud code, which is npm install dash g anthropic dash ai uh, slash cloud dash code. Once you hit, you're going to see that it's going to start downloading and it has changed three packages. I'm guessing it's because it has um, updated and perfect. Now you just have cloud code in your computer. Now, the next thing it will have to be going into a specific directory. In this case, also already in the one that I want, which is grammar fix tool. So this is a project and I'm going to be showing you. This is a project where what I'm going to be doing is I have some original text, like for example, hey, this is Alvero. And it's going to fix the grammar just by clicking fix grammar. And it's going to be using the actual OpenAI API key. Amazing. So you see that it works and it has put a nice format. Amazing. So now, how are we going to invoke this cloud code? So we are going to be having to type cloud. Okay, so once you type cloud, there it is. You're gonna have the, and you're gonna have, um, access to it. And we want to let it access our folder. So these are gonna be, uh, right now it's just gonna be one agent that is gonna take over and it's gonna be able to modify files, create new files, fix bugs, etc., etc. So right now I'm just saying, yes, proceed. But the cool thing about it is that now they have these sub agents and it's gonna be quite easy to actually create them. So I'm going to be showing you a step by step how to do it. Now, why are we going to be using SAP agents? Well, there is so many benefits, but the main two is going to be that they are going to have custom instructions for each. Let's say, for example, that you have an agent that is focusing on fixing bugs. There is another one that is going to be focusing on reviewing code changes. So those are going to be having their own custom instructions. But not only that, is that also the context is going to be limited for each SAP agent, which is going to be a game changer when it comes to the whole context for the entire agent because these sub agents are going to have a separate context window. Okay. So those are kind of the main benefits and how are we going to create them? So I already have created one and I am going to show you how it looks. So is it going to be in here in this folder cloud slash agents? And I created one that is called unit test generator. So this is kind of the description that is going to be having, which pretty much is use this agent when code changes have been made and comprehensive unit tests are needed to make sure that changes work correctly, et cetera, et cetera. Now, you're going to notice that it's going to have a specific color and a specific model, which is also a game changer because let's say that you want to use Opus for a specific task and then you want Haiku or, for example, Sonnet for a faster task, right? So, and then you're going to have here. So this is pretty much a markdown file and amazing. So it has everything that it needs in here. Now, instead of having to write it from scratch, what they did, so let me actually close this down. What they did is you are going to be able to generate them with the function slash agents. So you're going to be able to hit here agents and it's going to tell you that, hey, you can create a new agent. And uh, so right now we have a general purpose one that they already kind of given. And then the one that I created, which is the unit test generator. Now let's say that we want to create a third one. So what we can do is just select what it says, create a new agent, and then it's going to give you two options. So you can create it on this specific project or you can create it overall. Now, because we want it on only on this project, I'm just going to hit one and I'm going to hit enter. And then in here, you can do manual configuration, which will be a little bit tedious, or you can just generate with Cloud, which is a recommended and I will also recommend it. So now is where you're going to describe what the agent should do. This is just plain English and one sentence literally will work unless you want more uh, specific and more details about or constraint or what it should do. And then, of course, your prompt will be bigger. But for this case, what I'm going to be entering is I want an expert code review specialist that proactively reviews code for quality, security and maintainability. So when I do changes, this is going to make sure that, hey, everything looks good. So I'm just 
now we're gonna hit enter and you're gonna see that it's gonna generate it pretty fast. So let's just wait a couple of seconds. And now that it has completed, now it's asking, hey, which tools do you want to give to this agent? Which is also cool that you can select a specific ones because you might not want it to have to be able to edit. You might not be, you might not want it to do certain things that you want other agents to do. So in this case, I mean, this is a unit test so we can pretty much just have all of them. So I'm just gonna hit continue. If you want to get rid of something, you can hit enter in one of them and you will just uh, not allow it access to a specific function. But anyway, I'm gonna hit continue and then we have number five, which is selecting the model. This, I'm just gonna go for example with Sonet, it's one of my favorite models, so I'm just gonna go with Sonet. And lastly, we are just gonna have with the background color. So I have mine on yellow, the unit test, so for example, we can just select green, all right? Perfect, so now we have everything if we like it. So this is the description and this, this is the system prompt. If we like it, we just have to press S and this is gonna create a new one in here. So now we have the code review specialist.md. So use this agent when you want comprehensive code review after writing or modifying a code. Amazing. Uh, so now we have our agents. Now, how do we go back into our actual cloud code? I'm just gonna press escape. Okay, so let me click in here, press escape, and now we have the different changes. So we are done creating agents, now it's actually time to uh, see how they work. So. For example, let's say that I work on this grammar fix. I don't really feel like changing anything, but hey, I want to make sure that it works for all these cases, right? So what you can say is something like create unit test to make sure that everything works properly. So I'm gonna hit enter and you're gonna see here. So let's just wait a second. I'll help you create unit test and it's gonna say the updating to do. So this is the to do list and Hopefully, we're gonna see it soon. Uh, I just want to kind of let it run in so you are able to see it live. And you're gonna see when it goes into the creating comprehensive unit test, it's gonna switch into the sub agents. So right now it's using the sub agent called unit test generator, which is actually what we created for, right? To create this unit test. Um, so it's gonna do it automatically once it hits the task of that specific sub agent. So for example, the exploring the code base, that was not for that sub agent. They identified the testing framework, that was not. It was the actual creation of the unit test for the main functionality. And looks like it's finally done. It actually found a lot of different errors and it created a total of 54 tests that it also now are passing and it found so many different things, which are amazing. So now it actually created like grammar service tests for input validation, API errors, etc., UI rendering. So it created a bunch of different testing and it made sure that all of them were passing, which is amazing. And now if I modify anything from this specific web app, now what I'm gonna be doing is calling my sub agent to make sure that all my changes are correct and that they ha I cannot modify something that I shouldn't have. But anyway, hopefully this tutorial was helpful and I will see you in the next one.